Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue talking about theory of probabilities. This lecture is part of the uh, unizor.com website dedicated to advanced mathematics for uh, teenagers. Now, let me very, very briefly remind what we were talking about in the previous lecture. Um, the previous lecture and this one are dedicated to a little bit more formal, more rigorous definition of the concept of a probability. So, the previous lecture was basically about um, probability uh, of certain uh, events and elementary events in a particular case when we have our uh, sample space which is basically a set of all elementary events um, arranged in such a way that every elementary event has exactly the same chances of occurrence as any other uh, elementary event. So it's equal chances. Chances. Now, for that particular case, we have modeled our sample space as basically a set of certain elements, and the elements are elementary events, so they are elements. Now, and equal chances, basically it meant that every uh, elementary event um, has the same probability of occurrence as any other, and the probability was basically introduced as a measure which is equal to 1 over n for every elementary event, where n is the total number of events. We are talking about finite sets of the elementary events. So, we have a finite set, we have elements, each element is assigned a measure of 1 nth, and every subset is basically a model of an event in the um, lingo of uh, theory of probabilities. So whatever we call event in the theory of probabilities on the um, set theory language is basically a subset of this set. It contains certain number of elements. Any subset contains certain number of elements in the finite set, set right? So, and the probability of this subset, or the probability of this event, is a measure of this subset, which is m over n, where m is number of, um, element, of elements which are included into this subset. So basically, graphically, this is my set. These are my elementary events. Each one has weight or measure of one nth, and n, a, any event is basically a combination of certain elements, and the measure of this as basically an area when you're measuring on the plane is basically a sum of the measures of each element which, uh, which is inside of this, um, of this subset. In particular, a subset which contains no elements, which is uh, an empty subset, has a measure of zero. So the probability of occurring of no event among whatever the elementary events we have, like we are rolling the dice and what's the probability of having none? Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, and not six. Well, the probability is zero if it's a, if it's a normal dice. And the probability of the entire um, set as a full subset uh, is equal to 1, because we're summarizing all the elements uh, in it. So what's the probability of having anything, 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 when you are rolling the dice? Well, the probability is 1, because with a frequency of 1, something does occur. And then every um, subset, uh, which is in between the empty and the full subset, let's say the probability of having only an uh, even number on top. That's two, four, and six even numbers, right? So 
that's basically a combination of three elementary events and to to have the measure of this um, subset or the probability of the corresponding uh, event you just have to add them up all right what's the difference between this when the distribution among the different elements is even and it's all equal to 1 over n and a little bit more complicated case what if the distribution of the measures is not one end uh, of every uh, element of this set what if it's different well can it be different and what happens in this case well the answer is number one well it's our theory we can do anything we want with this theory we can obviously assign uh, elements uh, different weight rather than one over n right does it really uh, present any problem quite frankly from the theory stand standpoint there is no problem I mean we still have certain uh, measure allocated to every element and we can still summarize the measures which are inside like for instance in this graphical representation what if the measure of each elementary event is actually the um, uh, the ratio of the area of this particular um, uh, figure, whatever, divided by the area of an entire um, drawing, whatever I have here. Well, then, obviously, each one of them has a different measure. Some of them is equal to 1, right? Because you are adding together all the areas and divided by the same area. So it's basically exactly the same properties. The only difference is the distribution of the measures is not um, equal. So my elementary events are not equal chanced. They are not occurring with the same frequency if we are rolling the dice again and again. So, yes, answer is, is this, this is possible. Uh, and, and the other answer is that we can actually have certain practical situation when this is the case. Well, to tell you the truth, probably most of the practical situations ideally um, uh, it, it are, are not where the chances are completely equal, right? So it's only in some very, very artificial uh, conditions. For instance, if you are rolling the dice, are you absolutely sure that the dice is absolutely symmetrical? Of course not. Besides, there were cases when the dice were, was, was loaded, actually. They put some um, lead or whatever else inside the dice so one of the sides was actually falling on the bottom because it was heavier more frequently than the others so let's just consider this situation for instance you have a loaded dice and uh, your statistical results uh, show that one particular side is um, on the top like twice as often as all other sides so we have one two three four five six on the top and let's say this one is occurring twice as frequently as any others what is the distribution of, resp uh, of probabilities in this case well let's just solve the problem what do we know about the probabilities well, we know that if this probability is x, and this is x, this is 2x, this is x, x, and x, and we know that the total probability of everything together should be equal to 1, right? So, we have the equation. So, 7x equals to 1, x equals to 1 sevenths. So, the probability of this is 1 7, this is 1 7, the probability of 3 is 2 7, and then 1 7, 1 7, and 1 7. Sum is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 7 and 2 7 is 1, as it's supposed to be. So basically we have a model, we have the probabilities, and, uh, and now using these probabilities we can calculate the probability of, let's say, an event um, even number on top. Now, even number on top is 2, 4, and 6. 
and you sum these three probabilities and you will have three sevens. So that's even. And the odd number on top should be the rest of it, right? Right? So the odd should be four sevens. So the sum is equal to one. But odd is one, three, and five. So it's one seven, two seven, and one seven. So that's four sevens. Right? So um, the purpose of this particular lecture is to introduce you to the fact that the distribution of probabilities among elementary events, the finite number of elementary events, might not be necessarily um, equal. So it's not like a symmetrical distribution. The distributions in practical life are usually um, not symmetrical, but however, either the knowledge about the particular um, random experiment or statistics which you have accumulated before can actually show you which uh, elementary events the outcomes of our random experiment are uh, occurring more often or less often and based on that we can assign different probabilities to um, these events. So, um, basically that's all I wanted to talk about today so we have introduced the concept of distribution of probabilities. So if you have uh, a sample space, um, which is uh, basically the set of all different outcomes of your random experiments, in certain ideal cases you can count on every elementary event to be um, the same in its chances to occur as any other element. But in some non-ideal situation, like loaded dice, for instance, or in some other cases, um, the situation might be different, and the elementary events can have uh, different probabilities. Um, let's say uh, a group of students is passing certain exams. Well, um, they are not equal in their knowledge, which makes the um, probability of, let's say, um, any particular student getting any particular uh, score on the exam. Uh, it's actually a random experiment, but if it's a good student, then most likely the score will be higher than if it's the bad student. So, basically, all I'm saying is that the distribution of probabilities is not exactly ideal, like in case of a ideal dice rolling when everything has one six probability um, and uh, we actually have to take it into account when we are dealing with certain practical situations. Now as far as the problems which will be discussed, many problems will be discussed in, in the theory of probabilities, most likely these problems will be about ideal cases which means that it's extremely important to um, basically uh, realize what is exactly um, the sample space, what are exactly elementary events, and considering the situation is ideal, just the number of element elementary events brings you to the probability of each one of them. So if the number is n, then the probability of each elementary event is 1 over n, so you know the distribution of probabilities. It's evenly distributed among n elementary events. Now, to understand what's the probability of any event, all you have to do is to find out if this is your elementary events, then you have to realize what is the event you're dealing with, what kind of elementary events um, it consists of. And then just add the probability of this and this, whatever constitutes this particular event. And that's how you can understand, that's how you can find out the probability of any particular event. And again, everything goes to a set theory, with a set being a, a model for a sample space, with elements of this set being model of elementary events, and any subset of that set being a model of 
any event with the measure which we allocate to every elementary event and consequently using the additive property of the measure to every subset we can actually model the concept of a probability so probability on the um, sample space is basically a measure on on the set and again we're talking about finite sets right now the more complicated case of infinite sets and infinite number of uh, elementary events and uh, different probabilities etc these are all topics which I will not touch in this course this is more for college level uh, students that's it for today um, I do recommend you to read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com that would probably help you to better understand the concept of the probability and how it's related to um, more rigorous approach based on the measure and, and sets and subsets etc. Um, that's it, thanks very much and good luck! <laughs>